blood that still speaks Now I'm forgiven, I'm called righteous, I make thee There on the cross the Calvary You gave it all to purchase me You are the Savior and the God who set me free Now my heart cries, this is my Redeemer With my whole life I will give you praise All the glory to the one who's worthy Because of Jesus to enter into your holy place forever and now i'm hidden i am covered up to read to us the resurrection story. Yes. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in the clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the son of the man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, on the third day be risen again. 
All right. Awesome. Well, why don't you stand with me today? Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter to you. So awesome to see you all. You look so beautiful, so wonderful today. We're here to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. That's why God has brought us together today. You know, we're going to celebrate all throughout today, but how many know that celebrating Jesus shouldn't be a once a year occasion? Amen? That we should be celebrating him every day of our life. When we have breath in our lungs, we should give him praise. Hallelujah. This first song we're going to sing is called Rattle. And for some of you, it might say, why are we talking about dead man's bones? Well, you know, all throughout the Bible, the Word teaches us from Elijah uh, to Jesus that when Jesus or God comes into the picture of your life, it gives you a brand new life. So this is a song of celebration about how we were once dead and we were once doing our own thing and lost in this world. But when Jesus came in, he breathed life into our body, life into our minds, life into our hearts, and he gave us a brand new way of living. How many of you are glad for that resurrection today? Hallelujah. So let's worship the Lord together. Thank you, Jesus. All right. If you are here this morning and you're standing to your feet, go ahead, greet the neighbor next to you. Just welcome them to church this morning. Tell them happy Easter as we just celebrate and rejoice in the spirit and house of the Lord this morning in worship. Don't try to live. 
Lord Jesus, to be here today, that you laid down your life for us, Lord God. May you hear our praise as we just lift our voices in celebration for all that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Worthy are you to be praised.
you, Lord. Forever we will worship you. Forever we will worship you. Oh.
We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing church worthy is he to be praised this morning all days is he worthy to be praised but today as we just remember remember the past and what he has done today is your day today is your day Lord May we come here with hearts Praise with thanksgiving, Lord. I just pray right now for your presence to be here among each and every one of your children, Lord, that are within this room, that are watching online, Lord. May you be able to just move through them, Lord God. Transform their lives, Lord Jesus. May they be for you, for you alone. We pray this all right now in your mighty name. Hallelujah and amen, amen. Give him praise one more time for me, church. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to go ahead. We will dismiss the Kids to Kids Church if they're not already dismissed. And uh, you guys can have a seat as we go into a few announcements before our service. Thanks. Well, good morning, church. Happy Easter. You guys are not excited. He is risen. Come on, give it up. Of course, we should live like he's risen every day, but this is that time of the year where we take special time to remember my name is Pastor DJ. I'm the youth and associate pastor here, and we're so happy you decided to join us. If you're a first-time guest, we encourage you to fill out the Connect card. You can scan this QR code. You can uh, fill one out on the back of your chair. If you're watching online, the link is in the description. And if you turn that in at a Connect Center, we have a free gift to give you, just as our way of saying thanks for joining us today. You also, on your way in, received this special limited edition bulletin, right? Make sure you get it signed. Make sure you frame it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. It's kind of got our highlights for the next few months. Um, it talks about all of our ministries. We have kids. We have youth. We have young adults. We have stuff for men's and women's. We have a new parenting small group coming up. We recently launched our Faith Fridays, which means every Friday night uh, in 
Uh, there is something going on here. Those events are there for you as well. Um, we have a sight and sound trip coming up, which is exciting, which is on the back. All the information is there. And then also really big is we're going to be able to show The Chosen starting next Sunday at 7. Did we say 7? 6. At 6. It's going to be is here. Just come here at 6. You'll be here early. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So yeah, 6 o'clock. Be here for The Chosen. Invite your friends. There are posters out there in the lobby you can take to hang up to invite people. And then also on the way out today, we have a special Easter uh, devotional for you that you can grab on the table there while supplies last. But we are so glad you guys decided to join us. And now let's get ready for the word that Pastor Rod has for us. Amen. He did a good job. Give DJ a hand. Yeah. Well, I am excited to be here, Pastor DJ. I'm excited every day that God gives me to live for him. Uh, I'm excited. Every morning when I wake up, honestly, uh, I just pray, Lord, thank you that I'm alive today, that you didn't zap me from being stupid yesterday, and that today I get a new opportunity, a new chance to live for you, a new chance to uh, do good for your kingdom and to love people and be a bridge to others. Because so many people are hurting. So many people are desperate. So many people are looking uh, for what is this life about. We're going to start a new series next week, actually. We invite you back. It's called, What on Earth Am I Here For? Anybody ever ask that to yourself somewhere in your life? Like, what am, I, what am I doing here? What is my purpose? Why am I on this earth? Why am I existing today? And so we're going to tackle that uh, in the month of April and through May. What on earth am I here for? We invite you back for that new series. So we're so great that you're here, honored for all of our guests. Our first, let's welcome our first-time guests that are here for the first time. Wow, so great to see you. Family, friends, people coming from all over the country, uh, out of the country to be here together today as family. And, you know, I think about the global church around the world. As excited as I get about gathering with you all every Sunday morning, I just think of the impact that the message of the gospel is making as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ around the world today, his sacrificial death on the cross, uh, the miracle of the empty tomb, which offers us divine power that can change lives from the inside out. Amen? From the inside out. Yesterday, we had a tremendous Easter uh, outreach in McAdoo, Pennsylvania. We did an egg hunt. We shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. We had hot dogs, and we were celebrating all that Jesus did. We had nearly 300 people in that little park in McAdoo, Pennsylvania yesterday. And they're, so, they're looking to, to celebrate something. And to be honest, it's not the Easter bunny we celebrate. It's not uh, Reese's peanut butter eggs, though I do love those very much, just so you know. That's like my favorite times of year when those little packages come out that are yellow. But, uh, but we weren't there to celebrate that. We were there to celebrate the risen Savior, amen? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. As a matter of fact, there's a saying that the disciples used to say. It is this. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So I'm going to say he is risen, and you proclaim he is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we're going to celebrate a passage of Scripture. Uh, I'm so thankful for our young lady who shared earlier the Scripture and the story of the resurrection. We're going to look at a different part in the Bible, in Matthew, in just a moment. Uh, but this passage of Scripture that we're going to look at, it's a portion of the Bible that many of you have read or heard, or seen portions of it uh, on uh, Instagram, or Facebook, or on Easter cards, and, 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 and it's really proclaiming the miracle that happened over 2,000 years ago. And so I want to invite you to listen to this truth of the Easter resurrection story in a new way today. You know, I once heard a story, I read a story about a conversation that took place in a little Sunday school class at church, in a small country church. Little Mackenzie wasn't trying to start a debate with her Sunday school teacher, but she raised her hand because she wanted to make a point about the resurrection. Her Sunday school teacher had tried to encourage her class with full assurance that Jesus was indeed everywhere. 
There's no place, she said, that God's presence cannot be found. Little Mackenzie was fighting with herself, but she raises her little hand, she said, uh, with supreme confidence, she said, I know one place where Jesus isn't. (laughs) The teacher was curious, but a little taken back, and she said, oh, really? And where is that, Mackenzie? And the little girl with the big smile says, I can say with full confidence that he's not in the grave. Amen? (laughs) Little Mackenzie got it. What a great reminder. Yes, God is everywhere. He is alive. He is real. He is active. He's not some God made of wood or stone. He's not a statue. He's not a, 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 a something or somebody that lived long ago but isn't active today. God is alive and well and wants a relationship with each and every one of you. He is not dead. He is risen. Hallelujah. The first two to discover that were two women, Mary and Mary. Both were Mary, Mary squared. And they came to the tomb because they were worried about Jesus. Uh, Obviously, uh, they saw him die. They saw him die on the cross, which we just celebrated on Friday, uh, Good Friday, that Jesus sacrificed his life for your sin and for mine and to give us victory. But these two Marys, they came to the tomb. They were still weeping. They were grieving, and they just wanted to be where Jesus was. I'm not sure if you've ever had that desire in your life, maybe during a difficult time, maybe during uh, a time of grieving of your own life, but they just wanted to be where Jesus was, even though it was just his body, so they thought. And so they came with heavy heart. They mourned the loss of their dear friend, their teacher, the rabbi. Jesus, only three days earlier, was alive. He had been arrested and crucified by the on a Roman cross for proclaiming to be the son of God and the true king. They, along with countless others, had hoped that Jesus was the promised Messiah that they'd heard of their entire lives. Countless prophetic words from the Old Testament that spoke in the prophets that that God was sending the one Messiah, his son, to this earth, born of a virgin, to live as an example for us and then would be slaughtered as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. But now Jesus was dead. And here's the story from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6. It says, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. Wouldn't that be cool? His appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men. In other words, they passed out. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Hallelujah. He is not in the tomb anymore. He's not in the tomb anymore. He is risen from the dead. Wow. There was no doubt that Jesus was dead. He was nailed to that cruel cross with stakes pounded through his hands and his feet. With a crown of thorns on his head, he was bleeding. His body was ripped apart. And his last words were, it is finished. As he took his last breath. Joseph of Arimathea took him to his own tomb. And the Roman leadership said, put guards in front of that tomb because we don't want the disciples to steal his body and pretend like he has risen from the dead. And so they put soldiers at the tomb and they sealed it with Caesar's imprint that no one was to touch that tomb whatsoever. But the day, that day, God had a different plan. On that day, he sent his angel to remove that stone and those men fell away uh, as dead men. And Jesus was not in that tomb because he had risen just as he said. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you have come to church this morning very similarly to how these women approached the tomb 2,000 years ago. Maybe you've come here without hope. 
Maybe you've come here without joy. Maybe you come here saying, what's all the fuss about? Why is everybody so happy and excited and clapping? Life isn't that good. My marriage isn't that good. I just lost my job. I just lost a loved one. I just broke up with my fiance. Why is everybody so excited today? It's only Easter. It's only a holiday. It doesn't mean anything. What's done is done. You may be here with grief in your heart for something, for someone. Feeling that your future is not bright. Well, friends, you're in the right house today. Because I want to share with you today that the dreams that you once had can be resurrected. That the life that God created you, see, you were created on purpose for a purpose. You're not a mistake. I don't care what your parents told you, what the teachers told you, what your coach told you, uh, what others have said. You're not a mistake. You're not a loser. You're not a nothing. Matter of fact, the opposite is true. God created you. He loves you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And he wants to heal you today. And even though things seem impossible for you, if God can raise his son from the dead and bring victory to us over sin, death, and hell, God can do a miracle in your life today. Hallelujah. You see, the tomb is empty. Our Savior has risen, and this changes everything. The you know, one discovery that we the women saw when they went to the tomb, and it turned the world upside down. It flipped their despair to joy, their distress to excitement, and their discouragement to encouragement. And Jesus can do the same for you today if you let him. When I graduated from high school, which I really didn't live for God in high school, I grew up in the church all my life. But, uh, you know, when I got uh, old enough, I uh, realized there was these things called girls and alcohol and fun that was not the way my parents raised me to have fun. And I decided to choose those things over the way that God had for me. And many of you have experienced that. You've struggled with your own addictions and your own issues and your own problems of life and growing up. And I remember I graduated high school and um, I was overwhelmed uh, sitting in my car one day, and I just began to feel the grief of my sin. Anybody ever feel that, the grief of your sin? And I began to think like, man, I have totally blown it. My parents raised me in the things of God, but I have rejected those things, and I had this weight of sin upon me, and I literally had a breakdown in my car it was a, a little green Volkswagen diesel rabbit, the ugliest car you'll ever want to see. I call it the little booger. That's what it looked like to me. Like, and, uh, yeah. And I remember sitting in that, that little car crying and just saying, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I failed you. I'm sorry I failed my parents. I'm sorry I failed um, myself. And then God began to do a work in me. He began to show me why he is a God of mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of love. And that night in that car, one-on-one -on -one with God, he began to change me. And later, within a month, he called me to serve him with my life as a pastor full-time. The problem is I didn't believe that Jesus could forgive me. I didn't believe that the hurt that I have done to others and the hurt I had done to myself was overcomable. It seemed impossible to me as an 18, 19 year old to understand that kind of grace and love. I told God I wanted to believe, and because I professed that with my mouth, He began to change me. I felt a burden lift me, I felt a peace come in my heart that I hadn't experienced for a long time. It was a turning point of my life. Evangelist Smith Wigglesworth once said, there is nothing impossible with God. All the impossibility is within us. When we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. 
Friends, God can do the impossible. The only thing that limits him is you. You're the only thing that limits what God wants to do in your life and through your life. So the question this morning is, do you have faith? Do you have the desire to believe that Jesus can bring change in your life and do something awesome in you and through you? I'm sure those women who came uh, could not believe their eyes. When the angels spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. I mean, the guys are laying out. They're passed out already. These women come up. They're probably hiding their faces. How do you not be afraid? But their unbelief melted away, and their faith rose up because they remembered that Jesus said that death could not hold him, that he would be crucified, that he would die, but he would raise again. See, Easter is a celebration time when we gather together to remind ourselves that Jesus has risen from the dead, and because of that truth, there is profound hope for anything that we find ourselves in today, that it is possible for us to move and see God do great things, because if he could raise Jesus from the dead, he can can change our lives as well. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. That's right. I spoke about God's mercy earlier and how it changes us. The truth of Jesus' resurrection becomes a po- focal point for New Testament authors, and they write about uh, the impact of the risen Savior in their lives, in their cities, in their families, in the world. Peter, uh, if you've ever watched in The Chosen, Peter is quite the character. If you read about Peter, he's he's pretty, uh, quite the hot-headed, you know, uh, fight first, ask questions later type of disciple. And uh, Peter writes in his book, 1 Peter chapter 1, he writes this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, hallelujah, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Peter says we have reason to celebrate, not just today, but every day. And that reason is that God saw us in our broken, in our sinful state, and graciously offered us mercy by sending Jesus to die for us, defeating sin and death and conquering the grave. And I love the wording of Peter uses here to describe what he has offered to us and what he's offering us today. Peter says he has given us a new birth. The new birth. This is the common phrase used throughout the Gospels to explain what God does to change us. See, the Bible says that we are dead in our sins. We're born into sin. And, and, and sin is a natural way of our life. We are naturally sinners. But in order for us to have a new life, in order for us to have a new birth, we must first die to ourselves. The scripture says, uh, it is no longer I that liveth. Rodney doesn't live, but Christ in me. Yes, I'm still as handsome as ever. Come on. But Jesus, it's not supposed to be funny. It was just, you know. But Jesus has changed the inside of who I used to be. I was this way, but now I'm this way. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. See, that's the old me, and this is the new me. And the new me is imperfect. You can ask anybody who knows me. No comments, Ron. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. And guess what? Neither are you. So there. But I am forgiven. And I have God's mercy and God's grace and God's love, and I have a passion for him and a passion for life and all that he is doing. And how can I be that way? By the power of his resurrection. See, I die to myself daily, and Jesus resurrects me. He knows my old thoughts, my old patterns, my own ways, and he says, Rod, you need to die to that, and I'm going to raise up something new in you. Where you used to have anger, I'm going to give you peace. Where you used to have despair and depression, I'm going to give you joy. He replaces the old garbage of this world with the newness. But I need that mercy every day. I remember when uh, our first child was born, Nathan. He's not here today. 
he's serving at another church. But I remember this little boy coming into uh, this world. He was sweet. He was innocent. Uh, he was beautiful. Nathaniel means gift from God. And then he became a middle schooler, but that's a different story. Now he's 24 years old. It's crazy. But I remember that little newborn baby and going in and seeing him and holding him. And he had just entered the world. And he was beautiful. He was pure. He was innocent. He had no sting of disappointment, no pain of loss, no hurt of the mistakes he had made. And in so many ways, I envied that fresh life. And that's what Peter wants you to understand today, that that fresh life could happen every day for you. The burden that you feel, the heaviness, the weightiness, the stress, the struggle of life doesn't have to be yours. That's why he came and died on the cross because we can bring all of that frustration and all of that garbage and that addiction and that sin and that, that, that bad relationship, we can bring it all to the cross of Jesus and we can surrender it to him and say, I don't want this, God. You handle it. Make me fresh and new today. And he says, done. Done. By my mercy and my grace and my love. And we become innocent and we become pure. And I, I meet so many people, David, that walk around and they love Jesus and they love God, but all they can think of themselves as is the person they used to be. Oh, Pastor, if you would know what I'd done, I don't need to know what you've done. God does, and He loves you anyways. And I love you anyways. See, it's not about what you've done. It's about what Jesus has done for you. Come on, church. Amen? You're not who you used to be. You've made mistakes. You've made errors. You've made failures. But that's what the new resurrection is about. It's about a brand new life. It's about a brand new state of mind. It's about a brand new state of thinking and living. And that's why Jesus, being raised from the dead, gives us a chance at a brand new life. See, God changes our past, our present, and our future by life death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what he did for you. He did for you. Do you realize that the tomb is empty still today? I was in Israel. I was at Golgotha, the place of the skull, and guess what? Jesus wasn't in there. Hallelujah. Do you realize the mercy and the gift of mercy is for you today? Do you realize that you can experience new birth today? You can be changed right here in this sanctuary today or in your car or in your home or when you're in the shower. It doesn't matter. What matters, God judges the motive of your heart. It's not the place or location that you think that you have to do or be anything. Just allow the Holy Spirit to work on your heart today. And he is offering you a new chance of life. Hallelujah. And let me close with that thought. A change of heart. The real reason there are pastors who are preaching about the empty tomb today and the mercy of God today is because ultimately we want to create the opportunity for people all over this world, all online, all here today, to know that God can change your heart. Many people today, I believe, are hardened in their heart. They're hardened in their heart because of the sin. They're hardened in their heart because of the hurt and pain that they've been through. They're hardened in their heart because of television and media and online and all the lies and all the garbage. They're hardened in their heart, and they want to love, and they want to be loved, but it's hard, you know? It's kind of like pour, pouring water on a rock. It just really isn't going to absorb much. And the word the Bible uses for a change of heart is a word called repentance. And the Bible talks about this change and, and, and our proper response to what Jesus did for us is to repent. What does repent mean? I kind of shared with you just a moment ago. It's saying, I don't want to live this way any longer. I don't want to say those words. I don't want to think those thoughts. I don't want to be that guy. I, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I want to turn completely away from that, and I want to focus on Jesus. 
and living for him and all that he has for me and my spouse and my kids and my job and my ministry and what he wants me to do for the rest of my life. Repentance is rejecting the things and the garbage and the sin of your old life and saying, I'm done with that. Jesus, take it away. And he says, I will. Matter of fact, he says, if you confess your sins, what is a sin? It's missing the mark. It's the things that we've done to hurt God to hurt others, to hurt your own self. It's, it's when you confess those that God is so faithful and he is so just that not only will he forgive you of your sin, but he will wipe them away completely. He'll wipe away all unrighteousness from your life. And the only one that will remind you of what you used to be like is Satan or yourself. Because if you, if you go to God and say, God, you know, last week, you know, when I did that thing, he'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, God, do you remember? No, I, all I see is Jesus. And that's the beautiful part, and that's how we can, we can live in this sin-sick world. See, a change of heart or a turnaround or going a different direction, that's what it means to repent. The Apostle Paul makes it clear when he writes uh, to the people in, in Rome, in Romans 10, he says, if you will declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Let me unpack that for you as the worship team comes up. According to Paul, there's a two-step process in being changed. Step number one. Say step number one with me. Step number one. Declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your life. This is a very important step. To say that Jesus is Lord is to say that he is in charge and he gets to call the shots. People are afraid of what, what does that mean. It basically means I'm done screwing up my own life. God, you lead me. <laughs> That's what it means. You know, it means instead of reacting the way Rodney would react, I would say, what would Jesus do in this circumstance? When a guy cuts me off and tells me I'm number one with his middle finger, what would Jesus do? You know what I'm talking about. It's happened to you. What would Jesus do? And my wife has been diagnosed with breast cancer. We just celebrated 10 years cancer-free tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. What would Jesus do? See, that's what it means to declare him as Lord. I'm no longer going to think like an angry Irishman who used to go get drunk every time I was upset about something or wanted to have a good time. I'm going to think like a child of a king. I represent Jesus now, man. I'm part of his family. I'm part of his crew. I want to look like him. I want to talk like him. I want to think like him. I want to act like him. And I don't always do that, but man, that's what I want. That's what it means to make him Lord of your life. It's not some weird, like you don't have to join every church in, in the state to be going to heaven. Just say, Jesus, you're up. <laughs> you're number one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to read your book. I just want to be like a chip off the old block. I just want to be like you, Jesus. That's what it means to make him Lord of your life. So that's the first part of becoming a, a child of God. Confess him as Lord. The second, he says, if you believe in your heart, if you believe in your heart that the impossible became possible, you can actually believe. This takes a lot of faith. See, faith isn't something you can touch. Faith is believing in something that's invisible but trusting that it's right and that it's real and that it's good. If you can believe that God raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can bring you new life as well. Your bones can rattle again. Your bones can come alive again. The smile can come back on your face. You can be free from addiction. You can be free from pain. You can be free from brokenness. You can be free from your wounds. You can be free from the sickness. You can be free because of what Jesus did on the cross. He has set you free. So I believe it is Lord, and I believe 
that Jesus can do what psycholog- psychologists and, 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 and doctors and, and, and self-help books and alcohol or pills or, uh, uh, or, or, or drugs. I, I believe that Jesus can do what all those things can't do, that he can give me a brand new life. Hallelujah. That's what I believe. And so that's what Paul says to us. If you do these two things, confess, Lord, I'm a mess, I need you. We can all probably do that. And secondly, say, I believe. I believe in the truth of your resurrection, and I believe you can change me and help me to live a better, stronger life for your glory. See, there's no plan B with God. When he created you and you came out of your mama kicking and screaming and, and you know, all slimy and yucky, uh, he said, this is my kid. This is my child. I created him or her. I can't wait to see what they do with the life that I've created for them to live. But so many of us, we take plan B, C, D. We go down all these roads and we fall in the ravine and we get scarred up and messed up. And God's just saying, I Hey, hey, come. I have a perfect path for you. Not an easy path, but a perfect path that's going to bless you and, and, and love you and bring all this together, the meaning of life. Would you stand with me, please? I want to remind you that God loves you. Peter says, Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish as the world perishes, but instead will have everlasting life. And we were reading in Peter that there are are treasures stored away for us in heaven. See, when you ask Christ to come into your life, When you say, you're now Lord, you're in charge, you're driving the vehicle of my life, and I believe by faith in everything that I'm learning about you, then you're saved. What does it mean to be saved? (laughs) It just means you're saved from yourself, your own fleshly desires, your own fleshly ways of dealing with things. You're saved from the darkness of this world because the light of Christ shines in you and you're saved from eternity in hell because sons and daughters of God will spend eternity in heaven where there's going to be blessings and rewards for you so as we close in prayer in this last song I want to ask you this morning why don't you just close your eyes I want this to be a private moment I don't want anybody to be embarrassed If any of you here today say, Rod, I, I've never really built this relationship with Jesus. I've never confessed him as Lord. I've never, um, you know, said I believe. I mean, I like church or whatever. I go, but it's not a real deal for me. Today it can be. If you're here this morning and say, I want, I want this relationship with God that you're talking about through Jesus On the count of three, I just want you to lift up your hand. No one's looking around. I just want to pray for you. I want Jesus to change my life. One, I want Jesus to change my marriage. Two, I want Jesus to lead me on the right path. Three, if that's you, would you raise your hand? I want to pray for you right now. Thank you for those hands going up. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Pray this prayer in your heart with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me just as I am. Today I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse my heart and mind, and put me on the right path. I want a new birth today. I proclaim you as Lord of my life, and I believe that you were raised from the dead that you're coming again someday to take me home to be with you. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for your mercy and grace. And I love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give a hand for those who raised their hand today?
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. A Pastor David here, he's going to be up front. We have some materials to give you. If this is your first time, or maybe you prayed that prayer, we want to give you something to read to enhance your walk with God. So uh, he'll be up here to do that. He'll be right here to my right. But uh, are you ready to celebrate him before we leave? Yes. All right, let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. I love you. Have a great Easter day. Blessed. <laughs>